Tai sveiki visi, toliau esam neredaguota pokalbius ir šiandien turim VIP svečią, vakar buvo įdomus renginys, šiek tiek gal užsiminsim ir svečias dar neišvažiavo, tai turim progos jį pakalbinti gyvai, jau esat girdėję mūsų online pokalbį, tai sociologas Richard Maciej Machinkovskiai. Yes, correct. <laughs> no, he's very polite, he's probably not correct. So yeah, so today we're gonna have uh, a chat, uh, like um, various topics, uh, but uh, in a taxi I told uh, Richard that let's talk about the region. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the region, uh, since, you know, there are quite a lot of uh, wounds in terms of, you know, Ukrainian-Polish relationship, Lithuanian-Polish relationship. So let's start, some, let's start with some trivial thing, you know. So if you talk to an ordinary person, I mean, not like an ordinary ordinary, but let's say who is into... Uh, uh, you know, social things, uh, who is like into politics, uh, how they perceive those neighbors, like the, the crests, as the so-called, you know, like, uh, yeah. <coughs> is, is, is there still a thing or, or it's completely a thing of the past? I think that this is rather the thing of the past. Uh, mm-hmm. well, first of all, Edwinas, thank you very much for inviting me yeah, here. No need, no need to thank uh, it's, Richard. It's, it's, oh, oh, the it's, pleasure is all mine. Yes, it's nice that we can meet in Vilnius, a very beautiful city, one of my favorites. So it's really nice to be here. Uh, and uh, of course, I think that this, uh, for average person who is interested in this subject, yes, mm-hmm. uh, it is rather a thing of the past because, well, the, the present... Uh, times are simply dwarfing all these past things. So I do not think that people are tending to perceive uh, Polish-Ukrainian and Polish-Lithuanian relations, especially within the prism of these uh, historical uh, events which uh, spoiled some kind of uh, relations. You know why I'm smiling? Because I, yes. I, I, I remember that all of you have to learn in school uh, Litva or Chisna Moja. Yes. So, so yes. how, how does that re- resonate, you know? Well, of course, there is a huge education, and Mickiewicz is our favorite, and uh, well, and he's of course Paul, po- not he, Lithuania. He, he, <laughs> well, you you know you have different publications actually, and his mm. uh, uh, membership in 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 Lithuanian uh, society is now widely acknowledged. So it's not a surprise for a mm-hmm. especially younger person to consider him a Pole and a Lithuanian at the same time, basically. So, so you mentioned an interesting thing, a younger yes. person. Yes, yes, because, well, the older person were actually those people who, like me, well, had uh, education during the communist times. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, the primary education and secondary education, I started my studies during the communism and finished in the new Polish uh, uh, reality when we were free and we had free market economy and, and, and democracy. So it was this huge transformation, but still this kind of uh, education was very strictly on forwarding some kind of national values, yes, and say, saying that, well, this, this was a poll. Uh, but now I think that we have much more uh, a nuanced uh, up, um, kind of uh, approach towards these problems. And I think this is good because I think that these younger generations are more open and they are not dwarfed with this... Uh, uh, past uh, problems and they do not carry this burden of the past. So I think that they can just... Uh, I think that younger generation perfectly fits uh, in both uh, environments when a young Pole is coming to Vilnius and one young Lithuanian is coming to Poland, to Warsaw, to which, to wherever, they can easily speak without any kind of... Uh, in English. Problems. <laughs> Probably in English, yes, because, well, these languages are different if you do not know <laughs> Polish or Lithuanian. Surprise, it's, it's surprise. Hard. But, but mm-hmm. in this way, I think that they can just... Uh, uh, catch some kind of a communication which is direct and I think that this understanding that we used to be close, yes, but we had uh, some darker times, but we had also some kind of a bright times, yes, when we were just uh, brothers in arms, to put it in this way. Yes, yeah, so, It would be a very so, interesting topic to yes, talk about yes. those bright times, but let's, let's talk about the dark times a, a, a bit, you know, a bit. Uh, I heard this theory that, uh, you know, since we have these two regions in Lithuania, you probably know that the Vilnius region and Sh- yeah. Shalcininke, which, uh, has, which has a border with uh, Poland and, uh, and Belarus, um, they are basically, uh, well, they are not really happy with the mainstream, you know, Lithuanian policies. And uh, does that resonate in Poland, you know, in, in politics, that there is some um, group of Poles in Lithuania? Of course, how, how, how much Poles they are, that's another big question, yeah. but uh, that they are unhappy because they, they have this uh, Polish card, uh, which mm-hmm. lets them access, you know, the Polish uh, yeah. uh, benefit system, or I'm not sure how, how deep, but at least some, some of that. 
So is there some kind of, uh, you know, political uh, understanding <clears throat> that uh, po Poland has some Polish people in Lithuania who are, whose needs are not met in Lithuania? Do you have such, uh, such thing? Well, you know, I don't know how it is in Lithuania, how it is perceived in Lithuania, because it should be quite interesting, but you, you, I can you, tell you, know, in, you know, I can tell you in you two sentences. Much better. In two sentences? Yes. We consider mainly those Poles uh, not to be Poles, but to be, um, uh, well, let's put it lightly, Vatniks. Mo mm -hmm. not, not, not all of them, but mm -hmm. uh, some, because of their uh, some gestures towards the, 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 the neighbor yes. from these. But, yes. so, but there are some, uh, of course, bright people, and if you look at ordinary people, that's a different yes. story. But definitely in Poland, uh, I think that this is the mainstream, rather, kind of an approach. Uh, of course, you do have some kind of extremist on both sides, yes. Mm -hmm. But the mainstream considers, uh, the, well, well, they were absolutely ashamed, for example, when some Polish uh, organizations and Polish uh, institutions were more pro-Russian, yes, in this way. So I think that it was a kind of a, a not very well understood how like this could be, yes, it happened. So there was absolutely no kind of a, a mainstream kind of a support for this kind of actions. Also in Belarus, because it's not the problem only of Lithuania, but also yeah, in Yeah, we'll Belarus. talk about that separately. Okay. Yes, but, mm -hmm. but, but basically, so, so, but, but of course, there is some kind of understanding that some basic rights of a minority should be simply uh, um, forwarded by the Lithuanian government, but I do not think that anybody in Poland is really focusing uh, attention on these uh, uh, kind of problems. If this is definitely not the problem number one or even number number ten. Number, number 10 yes, I totally understand, Poland, but so. like uh, if we if we could uh, uh, put aside all the other problems, but just talking in, in a relationship terms between the Poland and Lithuania, how concerned uh, let's say the Polish government or opposition <laughs> is that, let's say for example. In 30 years, you cannot write down your surname, your Polish surname mm -hmm. in Lithuania with all the letters. Right now, we passed a bill which lets use some uh, mm -hmm. letters, but let's say yeah. the letter L or how you call it with this, you yes. know, yes. Uh, you know, let's say in uh, which, uh, which we would call we would call lodge, you know, yeah. uh, we cannot write that down. Yes. So and uh, let's say this uh, political party in Lithuania, which represents this uh, minority of Poles in Lithuania. Uh, there is a saying that they don't solve this issue because they have they had been quite a few times in 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 the in the coalition in the ruling ruling coalition because if they would solve this issue they wouldn't have a topic uh, to escalate probably so but uh, but how how do the poles uh, see like in Poland see this like that there is a neighboring country and I heard you know the emphasis that uh, let's say in the Suwalki region. You can write down your Lithuanian mm -hmm. name with your Lithuanian, you know, mm -hmm. uh, all the signs and uh, nobody cares and we don't uh, let the, the same. Of course, the opposition of this in Lithuania says that we cannot compare what you have in Poland, our Lithuanian, you know, citizens or uh, yeah. say, a, a ethnic m m m minority to what we have here in Poland in terms of, you know, scale. So how does that? How is that seen in, in Poland? Well, it's not a big issue in Polish politics <laughs> at, at all. all. At all, yes. You know, well, you, you, of course, there are so, sometimes we can <clears throat> hear about some information about it. Yes, and of course, uh, probably Polish government would like very much to reciprocate uh, everything which is. Uh, available in Poland, but you know, I think that the much, much bigger problem from this point of view is the po Polish minority in Germany now. Mm. So this is the problem when there is a huge focus from the governmental uh, uh, circles. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll touch on that, that as well. Definitely not Lithuania. So, so as you can see, Pol Polish government, this current government, uh, uh, is pressuring Germany just to, to solve this kind of problem. And this is perceived and this is also publicized. Mm -hmm. So you can read quite a lot of yeah, articles. It... Uh, of course, the, the point of view is different whether you are uh, pro-government or rather pro-opposition. Mm -hmm. But still, this is a kind of a, a topic which is discussed. I do not think that um, apart from some circles which are just focusing because they, for example, have some kind of uh, ancestors, yes, Lithuanian ancestors, mm -hmm. or are just focusing on these Polish-Lithuanian uh, relations. I do not think that just average person really knows very much about the situation of oh. Lithuanians in Poland and mm -hmm. Polish uh, in, in Lithuania. Lithuania. Yes. So even about the schools, there is not so much information, let's say, that in Lithuania, mm -hmm. the Poles uh, 
uh, have some issues in you know the education and uh, we are trying to put them on the Lithuanian education system completely like uh, uh, you know and, and and the poll say we want to read all the classical poets you know yeah. and uh, so there are some interesting tensions but not 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 much noise uh, from no, this no okay so the last thing on the Lithuanian the Polish thing I want to ask you is is there a difference like uh, how the let's say educated uh, uh, people uh, perceive uh, uh, the Polish-Lithuanian relationship uh, in, in a comparison with, uh, let's say, Polish-Latvian? Because from this, uh, you know, uh, Pilsudski era, we know that the Latvians were closer to the, to the Poles in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, cooperation. Is there a difference these days between like the Latvians and Lithuanians when, when somebody is talking about, you know, the Kress, let's say, <laughs> region? Well, you know, I think that... This is j perceived just as a matter of a historical times, I guess. Mm. And I think that there is a kind of uh, approach that Lithuania is very important from the point of view of a Polish security, yes, and these relations with like Lithuania a bumper, bumper zone, are yeah. very... Well, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not calling it bumper zone because Poland does not have actually bumper, bumper zones. If, uh, uh, of course, I, I'm not uh, just want to, 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 to... I just want to make sure that I do not believe it's... Uh, uh, in the near future, hopefully never. But if Lithuania is alone attacked by this by 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 these Russian troops, it was would be considered as a kind of an attack on a Polish territory, not because of these historical affiliations, mm -hmm. but by the matters of uh, of a presence. Yes, mm -hmm. because we are next in the line, and I do not think that actually Lithuania is going to be attacked by Russian forces uh, uh, apart from Polish kind of uh, uh, involvement in this in, in this context. So probably Polish territory also could be could be in this respect uh, uh, a place when some kind of uh, military or paramilitary um, uh, events may, may, may happen. So I think that no, no, now the major focus in the, on the cons current situation, mm -hmm. current security situation, and there is a kind of a huge uh, uh, focus on this that we cons consider so-called Pribaltica, yes, because this is Pribaltica, this Baltics, uh, ba 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 it's a very Baltics, wrong word, very wrong word, in yes. Lithuanian, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, this Baltic states, yes, yeah. to, to put it in English correctly, mm -hmm. that they are just forming some kind of a unity because they cannot live without each other, the, the, despite the, 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 the kind of. Uh, um, we be strongly believe that there should be a very huge uh, uh, cooperation between Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia just in the security matters, but not only just, for example, foreign policy, mm -hmm. trying just to what was said yesterday at the conference I, I've attended, uh, for example, in this military terms, yes, that... Uh, but you heard, the, they heard the evaluation find, yes, that yes, there is no cooperation, yes, basically. Yes, All the militaries, yes, Polish, this Ukrainian, was stressed. Latin, and so yes, is this different, was, you know. This was stressed. Mm. But I think that this is just the matter of urgency and the matter of, 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 of concern everywhere and I think that we should just focus on these issues uh, so Lithuania is definitely as our well kind of a special neighbor yes because there, there are these cultural you know needs. the special word means like but, 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 <laughs> a retard usually in Lithuania <laughs> no, no but you know for example when we are talking about special relations of mm. Great Britain and the United States in these terms okay yes okay. Of course, we know that the United States used to be a colony of, Uni of United Kingdom, yeah. but nobody today is uh, relating the special relations between UK and the United States in these uh, terms. Yes, mm -hmm. they, they simply, uh, especially in England, they are very proud of it that they have some kind of uh, good hearing in, in, uh, in Washington. Yes, and I think that uh, we should just treasure very much and try to um, kind of. Uh, uh, enforce uh, both governments to, 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 to combine their efforts uh, for mutual understanding and for mutual kind benefit, yes, because we are benefiting from cooperation when we are just losing both Lithuania and Poland, when we are in quarrel, yes, when we are having some uh, rifts, when we have some problems. This is uh, of uh, benefit to our uh, eastern neighbor, to Russia. Mm. When we yeah, are trying absolutely. to cooperate, when we are trying to communicate uh, uh, in the right direction, then this is something which is uh, making us much stronger. Okay, so Especially be because they are observing us, yes? They oh, are yeah. just using these tensions, yes? They are sometimes uh, provoking tensions, uh, these ethnical tensions or, or some kind of national tensions, just to break these relations because they want to isolate both of these countries. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland from other uh, relations. So. But you know, there is an ideological layer as well. 
I mean, it's very. Comp we all well, in Lithuania can come, you know, come back to the time when you know there was a different uh, government in Poland, and uh, there were tensions because you know at that time probably Lithuanian government was more conservative, Polish was more liberal, liberal, liberal yes. and, and now it's a vice versa. versa. Yeah. And how can we have a, a you know like um, uh, aligned uh, public you know foreign policy? Uh, of the of the Baltic states and and and, and Poland, uh, when you know the governments at any given iteration are quite quite different, you know. So we, there has to be some consensus, you know, regional consensus. Uh, do you think it's it's possible to? Is is the Ukra Ukraine war, you know, uh, awakened all all of this, or or we still you know have some strange things uh, running in our heads? Well, I think that the Ukrainian war definitely was kind of a wake up and some kind of a, um, alarm which mm -hmm. was ringing, yes, very 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 loudly, because well, what what, what we can else do? We have war just uh, over the the, the the border, yes. So I think that uh, it should be. I've, I I think. From from my point of view, I think that it would be really very good if in Polish capital, yes, in, in, in Warsaw, especially in foreign uh, ministry, uh, they would understand the importance of relations with uh, Lithuania and Latvia and Estonia. So do you think to, to everybody recognize... understands this, uh, this uh, these days? Or... I've, I think that there are people who are understanding this perfectly well, but I think that it should be just listened to the, at the higher level. But you probably, uh, never, you probably never heard, uh, I mean, maybe you heard, but I, I'm going to voice it out. Let's say our, uh, our some of the speakers uh, from our foreign policy, let's say, influ influ influence, uh, influential circles, Sometimes they try to educate, uh, you know, um, Poles and, and Polish government that, you know, everything could be fine if the Poles, you know, just uh, take the good road, you know, uh, like this uh, relationship with Germany will come to that, but like uh, uh, wouldn't raise stupid uh, concerns and, and, and stuff like that. So what I'm trying to say that... Uh, like all sides are making mistakes uh, yes. still in, yes. in, 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 yes. in, in a war time. Exactly. So, yes. uh, and what what kind of other wake up call is needed you know if this is not enough to to actually put this ideological differences aside and understand that uh, the uh, geography is 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 crucial here well i think that uh, people should understand in their full capacity you know because some people still they are having some kind of uh, knowledge and uh, information about it but uh, we still have to understand perfectly well and to increase this awareness of this fact that we are connected. We are connected. We are just dependent on each other. Yes, we cannot just leave alone uh, some problems which are currently, uh, uh, well, actually provoked by, 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 by the situation in the East. Uh, and I think that when this awareness, of course, it's, it's good if this kind of awareness is emerging on the level of societies, yes, of Polish society and Lithuanian societies. But I'm thinking about ruling elites or ruling mm -hmm. class. Yes, you, when, when ruling class will embrace in full the fact that we are so much dependent and we should help each other, I think that this is going to be a kind of uh, transformation which is leading us in a good direction. But it's, I do it, not think that both in Vilnius and in Warsaw we are just achieving this kind of uh, approach. But I think that slowly but slowly but we are just approaching it mm -hmm. uh, and we are now moving in a good direction, definitely. Because I think that there is a growing uh, uh, awareness of the fact that uh, we are so much dependent in these are uh, vis areas of a hard politics, yes, because security is hard politics. It's, uh, we, we can, of course, have uh, different opinions on soft problems, yes, and we can disagree. Well, this is natural, you know. Well, otherwise we wouldn't be different. Yes? I want to joke straight away. And so, H how how can we come, you know, to to, to peace, like uh, about let's say Pilsudski issue? Uh, what, what, what 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 would you suggest? How to because it's it's very complicated. Like if you look through the historical <laughs> point of view, you yes. know, and uh, Armia Krajowa and Pilsudski, and yes. then the uh, Rifle Union, uh, which was mentioned yesterday, and Sholey. And, uh, you know, the Smetona, there was some tensions. Of course, there are some brighter, you know, uh, uh, let's say, um, acad acad academical people who say, let's leave the history to the historians, you know, and let's live now. But uh, uh, there are people who like to uh, stress, you know, that, oh, you, you remember and we remember, you know. <laughs> and 
So what, what would you say? You know, but, but by focusing on these discrepancies and on these uh, bad things in our history, in current times, I don't think that this is fruitful for our future. Mm -hmm. And I think that especially for young, young people, of course, uh, w what is going to happen is much more important than what happened uh, in, in our past. Consider, for example, much more tense and difficult, so-called difficult relations between Poland and Ukraine. Yeah, I wanted to move to yes. that as well. You know, we, so. we, we have never, in, in, in our relations, Polish-Lithuanian relations, we have never reached that re level. Reached that level yeah. Yes. But Stefan Bandera yes, you know, yes. is a different but, caliber. Yes. Of, and there is a different perception of Stefan Bandera in Warsaw and in Kiev. This is obvious, you know. And so, in Lithuania, so, so, we also see Lithuania differently. Also, you know, yes. so. so I think that this is just obvious that we are different, but because we, you are Lithuanians, we are Poles, they are Ukrainians, and I think that the, 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 some kind of an assessment of our historical events will never change, probably, and will never be a kind of... And almost at every kind of uh, um, relation level will be a kind of a problem because the perception of these uh, events are completely different. But of course we have to condemn, for example, all these things which was bad in our history because uh, I think w when we are talking about morality, yes, when we are talking about ethics, when bad things uh, happened, we simply had to call them uh, like that. Yes, black is black, white is white and we should not just be trying to say that, you know, it's not a black, it's a shade of grey, but it's darker, so whatever. But I think that, uh, in fact, when we are just focusing on our past, we are forgetting about the future, yes? And we think that uh, I would recommend to leave all these things to historians. They should debate, yes? For example, they should uh, uh, acknowledge, for example, how these people are just uh, being learned by youngsters, yes? Like we had this commission uh, with Germany, how to present things in the history, so the historical books uh, had to be rewritten, yes, in this... Uh, uh, at atmosphere of mutual understanding as far as it is possible, of course, on both sides. Because we have to be very fragile and, and, and then kind of respectful towards each other. But I think that the future is simply much, much, much more important. And look what is happening in Polish-Ukrainian relations. Yes. So, so how, 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 how would you, I think that how would you evaluate those relationships? Let's say, uh, I don't know, past uh, five years, 30 years, uh, what was, you know, the, the, the processes that, uh, that happened? And of course, the last year, year and a bit, that probably changed everything. Definitely, it was dependent on the government coalition, yes, because mm. when, when you just mentioned, yes, you have once you had conservative government here and so called liberal government in but Poland very, and vice versa. But Richard, so, it's, very, it's very strange because right now Ukraine has a liberal government yes. and Poland has a conservative so called ruling. conservative, yes. oh, so called, okay. Yes. And, uh, and they find many managed to find yes. uh, peace, of course, the, 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 the force majeure, but. Uh, but this is, you know, the, the, the pressure of the situation. We simply mm -hmm. cannot uh, discuss all these things uh, uh, f from our history and we sh still should have... Well, l l look, the Ukrainians made some kind of... Uh, 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 welcome remarks, yes, towards Poland, yes, for example, like the cemetery in Lvov, mm -hmm. which was a kind of a matter also of, of some kind of a problems between Poland and Ukraine. But of course we are uh, helping Ukraine as much as we can Probably we should uh, even more, but but we try to, 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 to do as much as it is possible because this is just a matter of, 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 of what is happening now. And uh, we are also connected to the Ukrainian security, yes? We simply cannot let the Ukrainian side uh, um, lose and mm -hmm. fall uh, because what is the result? The result is that we are actually bordering with the former Soviet Union apart from the Baltics and the Baltics are going to be the next uh, territory which is uh, uh, in focus of the Kremlin. Yes, and so we should simply the the, the situation which is currently uh, um, observed uh, is making us uh, or forcing us even to see problems in a different light. Yes, mm -hmm. and I strongly would uh, advise. My humble advice uh, is uh, because I'm just an academic. Yes, you know, I, I I had no influence. I 
me you're just not please, just you are I, I mean you're, you're not, that, that's why that's the importance because uh, but you know I may mean, just propose some kind of ideas but mm-hmm. they are just going to be discussed but the implementation of these ideas are the matters of governments yes absolutely uh, so the, those people who are in power yes because they are empowered to do to move things yes uh, yeah but forward. they should listen to something well, and the, you know opinions probably uh, yes so. but it, it would be nice of course if they are just uh, uh, some kind of uh, Uh, interested in, in these things, but my, my, my humble advice would be just to focus on the present uh, situation and forwarding uh, this present situation towards future, yes, just to build this kind of uh, relations which are mu- benefiting mutual us and you, yes, in any kind of aspect, economic aspect, military aspect, political aspect, uh, and let this past things be discussed freely, Yes, mm-hmm. by, by the historians, by uh, people who are also not the historians of politics, but also historians of, of culture, of, of uh, um, social relations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we should disagree on some things, b- because this disagreement will ever last, I guess. But we should change probably our view on some things, uh, but s- s- still let it put a bit aside and put it apart. I'm not f- telling that it is about f- uh, that we should forget about mm-hmm. it. Because the history is a, le- a kind of a lesson, yes? If we can't learn from the history, well, we cannot move forward because w- w- what we are going, we are going to repeat the same mistakes. These mistakes which are just uh, putting us apart. But we should be as close as it is possible, of course, as independent uh, sovereign states, well, under the Aegis of European Union, NATO, these kind of alliances, because we need this kind of a backing from... So we are not from building, uh, building Rzeczpospolitan? No, no, I don't think <laughs> I'm so. I'm just kidding. No, of course, and I do not think that there are any serious uh, people in Poland who are thinking about uh, this. If somebody is just uh, suggesting this, this is just a kind of uh, disinformation. Okay. I do not think that there is any kind of... Uh, Uh, move towards thinking about building a new one. Of course, we should base on what was good. We should understand and we should uh, just uh, consider what was bad. But I think that we are thinking that the future is not going back to the past. It is impossible. We are going to live in a completely different future. We are living in a completely different social uh, situation, in completely different social kind of uh, environment, yes? Mm -hmm. How can how can we how can we compare what was happening in the 19th century, in 18th century, 15th century with what is happening now when people are just uh, getting to know the news from all over the world? This globalization will not uh, stop. Some part of globalization is going to stop definitely, especially in this economic area because it appeared mm-hmm. that it is a bit uh, tricky, for example, to move all factories to China. Yes, this is this is something which is uh, lightly which said. Is, <laughs> yes, lightly said, but 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 I think that this kind of uh, freedom of movement, yes, freedom of uh, settlement, has uh, to be, ref- ref- has, to be has, to, has to stay because well, this is, mm-hmm. this is a kind of uh, achievement, yes, of our bo- achievement, social achievement, both in Poland, in Lithuania, in any country. I guess. Okay, so just uh, to finish on the Ukrainian uh, Polish topic, uh... so, so just, just, just let mm-hmm. me let, let, let me show you the ex- example because I was traveling to Vilnius by car mm-hmm. uh, two days ago, and don't you think that this is a good uh, good thing when we are just traveling? We are just crossing the border. We know that there is a border that we are entering Lithuania and back, but there is no. Uh, passport checking, something like this. Yes. But you know Don't what? You, you, you know what is a bad, uh, bad side of this? Uh, that well, always. I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm yes. going to joke here, but uh, uh, on the um, Polish side, you have. We, we used to joke like 10 years ago that you know the roads in Poland, uh, the roads in Poland was a, was a, was a topic of joke. Right now, it actually uh, actually turned upside down. And it's it's very it's a shame, you know, on the Lithuanian all the governments that we had because mm-hmm. uh, we don't have a proper highway. I would mm-hmm. say we need a few highways, and the Poles managed to build uh, one almost yes. to, to to the border. Yes. And you and almost. once you cross the border, you are going like in this uh, road which has a speed limit of 90 kilometers. And when you start thinking how those Abram tanks would uh, would come, uh, yeah. uh, I'm not even talking about rail, uh, you know, project, yes. which is uh, also a shame on our side yes. and the speed and the, 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 the transition and the stuff. Of course, there are some who are saying, "Oh, we would bring everything by ships," but uh, I think it's just running from the problem. So yeah, but 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 the moving without a uh, you know a border patrol is absolutely a good thing. Although, 
when you go to Poland, there is always a Polish police looking at you. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, so what I wanted to ask, uh, because it's also a very serious question, uh, the refugees. Uh, how would you, because it is probably your topic, uh, you know, academically, uh, do you see any changes in the so society behavior towards the, the, the refugees? Are they being welcomed more? Is it the same? Or is the society getting a bit tired of this, uh, you know, burden that is uh, basically put on it? How, how, does it uh, how does it look on the Polish side? And the Polish side here is the most important because you have the biggest concentration of uh, migrants compared to any other country. And, you know, you have a border which, you know, people tend to complain that, oh, we, we were crossing for 30 hours, you know, and stuff. But <clears throat> it's, it's a huge task uh, on the Polish uh, side. Yes, it is. But I think that uh, we, we just passed this exam, so, social exam. Social exam. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a society, I guess. And I'm telling this not only uh, because I'm a Pole, yes, and I would be, I would obviously would like to be proud of what, what, what we did, but I'm hearing it also from, from foreigners. But I can interrupt. And, I, I, and, and from, from foreign diplomats, because I had an opportunity to meet a couple of diplomats in recent times, uh, you know, and they were Richard, just telling uh, the, it. The, the, and the, the, it was not just a diplomatic. <laughs> okay, you know? okay. But what I want to say, in Lithuania, there is definitely uh, some, uh, well, the, People got tired of of, of, mm -hmm. of some uh, things, and that you can hear it in, in the in the noise in, in the social media, and the, it, it's it's a sad for me, you know, as as one who thinks that uh, these are special people in a good way of saying special, and we have to do all that we can and more. Yeah. And you're saying that in Poland there is no such issues. You you, you pass the exam completely <coughs> like with the highest mark. Yes, I think so because well there are all obviously some problems. Yes, and but these problems were just some kind of a minor kind of problems, mm -hmm. and to, they are settled in the margin, uh, marginal way, because well first of all we were in fact uh, a place when a lot of immigrants, not refugees, because it was before the 24th of February mm -hmm. 2022, we have to remember. We already had almost, well, nobody knew at that moment, yes, because later we just start uh, making statistics, yes, but uh, before we didn't exactly know, but uh, there is a kind of an estimate that we had already one million Ukrainians in Poland, uh, which were immigrants, yes, uh, but this Ukrainian immigration, and I can see it also at my level, because I'm living in a flat when a lot of uh, people are coming from Ukraine and they are just our neighbors, yes, mm -hmm. uh, and they settled perfectly well, there are absolutely no kind of social problems when the war actually broke. Yes, because I, I had neighbors, Ukrainian neighbors, who settled well in, let's say, 2020. I'll, I'll give you one question here. But I will just let, let okay, me finish okay. this story. And when the war broke, of course, uh, they accepted their families, yes, mm -hmm. or some relatives who came to Poland. Uh, they were refugees, exactly refugees, not immigrants, but refugees. And people from my flat were helping them, yes, trying to provide with some basic... Uh, uh, stuff, yes, mm -hmm. uh, like pillows or whatever which were needed, yes, some, some, some food for children who came also, young children who were not present because they were still in Ukraine and they uh, came to, to, to Poland in, in this initial moment mm -hmm. of, of war. So people were very, really very helpful and I'm really very proud of this kind of uh, um, uh, uh, reaction. Because I think that majority, I'm not saying that everyone, yes, because we have, well, we are, we are 37 million, yes, of course, mm -hmm. so you can easily find uh, 1,000 people or 10,000 people who are thinking differently. This is obvious. But I think that Polish people had the imagination to know that what is happening in Ukraine might happen in Poland, and we are going to be in the same position because people from the eastern side of Poland might escape were to Germany and uh, our European neighbors are going to help us. So if we are in the situation that we can help actually the Ukrainians who are just fleeing yes, mm -hmm. uh, and coming to us, there was a kind of a huge kind of emotional uh, um, kind of um, reaction. Uh, I was observing, for example, at my university when, when people were accepting uh, to their flats, to their homes, uh, people who were there, uh, please note that there were no refugee camps, in fact, in Poland. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, all these we people were already resettled. Some of them uh, went to their uh, relatives who were already in Poland. Uh, so this population of Ukrainians increased by, at, at the heights, uh, I guess it was 4 million. But when the situation in uh, um, Ukraine, war situation, uh, was 
getting better from the point of view of Ukrainians, yes, when they're trying to recapture the, 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 their territory, a lot of them came back, yes, to, 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 to their homes. So I think that there is a huge understanding of this, and I think that uh, more or less, well, maybe not, I will not, we have uh, uh, from uh, at the university grades from two to five, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I don't want to say that we got five, but I think four plus, it's, it's a good kind of... Uh, assessment what we did and I think that it was some kind of a, a very emotional reaction towards the, this tragedy, human tragedy which was happening just nearby uh, our borders. So I think okay. that it was so, okay. I do not think, just answering mm -hmm. your question, of course now after the year of war the situation is different. Uh, we have definitely less uh, refugees than we used to have uh, uh, in this initial stage, uh, but I do not think that people are tired. They they they, they settled, you know. They are just uh, treated like uh, neighbors, rather. They are, what I course, wanted to tell you that uh, maybe this there is no such problem in Poland, uh, and we will come why there is might be not a problem in Lithuania. Uh, one is one of the biggest concerns, which uh, or complaints, let's say. Is that uh, Ukrainians who came who came here? Uh, they speak Russian, you know, and the people start yeah. to doubt, you know, uh, how Ukrainians how Ukrainian yes. there are. Yes. So I wanted to ask, like the ones that came to Poland, like uh, did they? Because probably the ones who speak Ukrainian, they for them it's easier to integrate into Poland society. Like, but is is there a problem of a, of a language of the Eastern Ukraine that came to, to to Ukraine, or how was that solved? Absolutely, I don't think so. I will tell you an example because I met these Ukrainians, which were Russian-speaking mm -hmm. uh, population, okay. long before uh, the war, because they were our students, because the, which is a huge academic kind of a, a, a center. And we had a lot of different high schools and, and universities uh, in this city. And uh, it was quite popular from Ukraine to come to Poland to study mm -hmm. even, well, 2015, 2016. Uh, my faculty, which is Faculty of International Political Relations, uh, we are having currently 110, uh, well, 1100 students, yes, so it's not big. Mm -hmm. And we have more than 300 students from abroad. And mm. approximately 200 of them are from Ukraine, but also from other so-called former Soviet Union states like Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. and so on. But the majority of them were Ukrainians, and they were coming to us, well, since uh, 2015, 16. And I was talking to them because I was lecturing them. Some of them were just uh, entering Polish courses because they knew uh, some Polish, and then they can just learn Polish better. But some, they were just uh, entering our in courses in English, and I was also lecturing them, I was a lecturer, yes. Uh, and I was talking to them, and uh, of course they were saying that they are much better know and speak and use Russian language than Ukrainian, because they are from the eastern part of Ukraine, mm -hmm. which Russian is much, definitely much more uh, popular as a working, uh, working. And these are young people, yes, 20 years old, 22 years old. But there was absolutely no problem because we were saying, well, I'm a Ukrainian, yes, I, I have no doubts. I, I, I'm not thinking that I'm, uh, well, Russian-speaking Ukrainian or maybe Russian, but I don't know who am I and what mm -hmm. is my uh, kind of identity, no. So I think that uh, there was absolutely no problem because when you are, for example, traveling by tram or by bus, uh, you can hear Russian, yes, and these are, well, not Russians, but Ukrainians using Russian language. And, and, and Poles don't have and, a problem and, with that. Absolutely, no. No, all older generation is even well. They, they understand them, yes, because uh, mm -hmm. we were forcibly, uh, we were forced to learn mm -hmm. Russian as a generation. Yes, it yeah. was just a must to to to, to learn um, Russian. So older generation even just are saying that they are just uh, understanding a bit what they are saying because they are going to this time. So it is much easier, for example, for for the older generation to communicate than youngsters because youngsters are m mainly uh, English speaking. Yes, like we used to. Uh, ob observe it, so so it's it's, it's the same. Okay, so so it actually the, the the situation is much brighter than you know some some so. in Lithuania yes, can I think, think so. of, of it. Okay, so let's let's now talk a bit about uh, probably the the, the darkest uh, place you know around our borders. Uh, well, not considering the the the, the, the dark hole uh, uh, Kaliningrad, but uh, <laughs> let's talk about uh, Belarus. You know. 
Um, how is the opposition of uh, Belarus perceived in the political class in Poland? Because I can tell you briefly, like, what is here? The, the mainstream in Lithuania, like, uh, they are really pro Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya, but there is uh, plenty of uh, free thinkers who question and who think that we made a mistake by giving a special status uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, <coughs> promoting her and, and stuff, because we, of, of course, we had to accept her, and, uh, but we didn't have to give uh, uh, some, you know, uh, statuses that we, that we, that we, we did, because uh, obviously if you rewind the tape, uh, there's a lot of strange things, uh, everybody who follows the politics know, the, the husbands, the, the, the other parts, you know, the, the men part of the, of the triangle of the free women. And also during the, the since the, the, the protests in, mm -hmm. in Minsk, uh, there was quite a few statements, uh, stupid statements, uh, let's call it like that, uh, about moderation from, from Putin. And even when the war broke out, Svetlana said some uh, strange things like uh, we helped uh, Kiev not to fall and, uh, and, and similar issues. So there are people who say that this cannot be trusted and also the official Kiev uh, uh, has not accepted you know, the, 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 any kind of relationship with uh, except Alexei Aristovich who was promoting this, uh, this part. Uh, uh, but the, 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 the official is actually um, not in a relationship uh, with mm -hmm. the, and, and uh, actually he explained in our interview why it's so complicated, but I, I want to, to hear your thoughts. So what is the Polish view on this uh, Belarus opposition? Uh, because the official <coughs> view is quite similar to what is official in, in Lithuania. But what is it like in, in, since you know the much you know, wider spectrum? Yes, I think that the, the, this official approach is uh, probably similar to this Lithuanian because, well, we, we had no other option. We have to support opposition, well, and you... Opposition who wanted moderation from yeah. Putin. It is, you well, know, that's what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, yeah, sometimes it's inconvenient, but of course, you know, people change. Yes. You uh, think? The, the, yeah, yes, people had, uh, ha have the ability to, 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 to change their views. And I think that it happened to some extent in this case, yes, of Cichanowska, which was saying uh, something different three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, and is saying now. So definitely people have this ability to adapt, whether it, you know, I'm not very much deep in this, in, 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 in this uh, topic, definitely, because, well, it, it's not my specialty, in fact, but uh, uh, I think that... Uh, uh, what can you do? You, you have some kind of uh, reality which you have to accept. Yes, uh, to some extent you may influence, for example, what they are saying by uh, well, informing that uh, so something which is not well perceived, for example, in Poland, yes, uh, or whatever. But I guess consider, for example, anti-communist opposition in Poland in the 70s. Yes, uh, or, or I, I will show you this as a kind of an example. Quite a lot of people who were actually building this anti-communist opposition were for me, former Communist Party members, yes, who completely changed their view. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they were acknowledging that they were former party members, sometimes they forgot. Mm -hmm. But what happens, it is human, after all. But definitely, I think that, there, of course, there were some kind of uh, ponderings or considerations whether they are just uh, kind of a provocateurs, yes, or people who are sent by the communists to infiltrate, yes, uh, these kind of movements. Uh, I think that people who are, uh, this is something which actually I was uh, telling my students all, 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 only recently. Those people who are uh, young and those people who are especially raised in a democratic society and they are accepting these democratic values as a kind of a face value, yes, they, 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 they think that they are obvious. They do not understand how complicated was life under the communism. Mm -hmm. So, for example, because I'm belonging to this generation which was raised in, under communism, I think I had a privilege and a burden to understand much better totalitarian and authoritarian states. Mm -hmm. Because my experience is saying me how, for example, autocrats and, and, and totalitarian mm -hmm. uh, parties and regimes are just acting and thinking. Yes, uh, those people who are younger, yes, who, who do not remember or were even born afterwards, they had a huge difficulty in under... This is a part of a problem why they dealt with Putin like uh, politicians like Lukashenko before, yes, before the war. 
because they, they, they thought that they essentially are more or less the same like in the West, and they <laughs> weren't, and they aren't, and, and they will never, n never be. Yes, so basically this is the case. So I think that the, the, definitely the composition of this Belarusian op 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 opposition may be very complicated. Yes, definitely, just to put it frankly, definitely there are some people who are, who are belonging to the KGB, yes, Belarusian KGB, just to... To, 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 to inform KGB what is happening in the opposition, because, well, these kind of agents were also placed in, in Polish opposition. But I think that there is no, no, no kind of a general approach that we should question their uh, uh, kind of approach towards what is happening now. But you know as, the, as a general, yes. But Richard, there, is, there, there is a view that uh, there is this old opposition of Belarus Uh, which were actually, uh, you know, intelligent opposition, and what we have now, this is a yes. new wave of opposition, yes. which is yes. which is to be questioned. Yes. That's what I want to emphasize. Well, but basically, first of all, this is the question of the Belarus people, yes, uh, to, mm -hmm. to, to solve this problem. No, this is not the matter of Poland. But all, those, all, all this opposition is living abroad, you know, of course, for the yes. obvious reasons. Uh, yes. So, you know, the Belarus people uh, and the Belarus opposition is quite okay, two so, different but, things. So, so, because they are living abroad, well, this is a the, the, the good uh, period of just checking them and just, uh, for example, for educating them, to, to educating in a very inverted commas, yes, just mm -hmm. to, to showing that uh, if you want to to call yourself a democratic opposition, you have to uh, adhere to some common core values of a democratic society, I think. And, and then people simply, I, I strongly believe that people can change, yes, internally. Otherwise, we would be robots, yes. So, but robots can also be reprogrammed, yes. So, so I think that human beings have this. You're an optimist. <laughs> m maybe you know, but I think that this this kind of approach is making me more 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 uh, optimistic about the future. Mm -hmm. But the the situation of Belarus, I, I committed a very short piece o o o o almost recently on Belarus situation in the context of uh, in the frame of war. And I, I just to put it very, very, very shortly, I, I wrote as a conclusion on conclusion that the situation is so dynamic, so unstable in, in the East uh, that we can, in a couple of years, uh, and this is as well plausible to border with a democratic uh, Belarus, yes, and to border with Russia Federation. So both these scenarios are exactly the same likely that we are going to observe, for example, the annexation of Belarus as a result of things which are happening in Ukraine and in mm -hmm. Kremlin. But at the same time, if uh, there is a switch of history, yes, mm -hmm. because this is definitely Ukrainian war is a turn, uh, it's a historical turn. Mm -hmm. yes? People uh, may go in this direction and in this direction. It may also easily move towards the situation that we are going to have free, independent, sovereign state of Belarus run by opposition. But of course, all these internal problems are to be settled by okay, so the I want, Belarus. I want a, one clarification question here. There is an opinion that in, in, in Belarus uh, there were no Uh, nation building process which happened you know in the other countries yeah. uh, around uh, I'm talking yes. you know Ukraine and, uh, and 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 Poland and Lithuania because uh, they didn't have basically time in between yeah. in between the wars and now they would have to go through that process because the, the history you know has steps yes and uh, yes. Uh, we as Lithuanians probably for the Poles is a bit different we are concerned because uh, the, the the Belarus uh, uh, you know people They don't have anything of their own to relate, and they are, you know, we see the, the, the flag, we see the, you know, the, the white uh, yeah. horseman, which relates, and, and even some radicals who say that there are no, so we are Lithuanians and you, you are, you know, uh, some uh, Yeah, so, so <laughs> the, the, it's very tricky. For Poland, there is no such, such issue. How do you think that the dynamics of this, uh, if, let's say, the, the Belarus uh, society goes you through the, the democratization process, you know, and uh, They have a proper pricing, they get rid of all those uh, Lukashenko, you know, uh, people. 
how do you think it's gonna is gonna look? or or there is a plan of of, of Poland to, to properly you know absorb you know this country and make it uh, like a no 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 absolutely not because nobody wants to absorb any country in in, in Warsaw. This is, if anybody is saying something like think it's just a lunatic, you know. <laughs> so so, so. The, the, the thing is why I'm asking because there's a lot of money from Poland uh, flowing towards you know the independent uh, press and movements in, yes. in Belarus, and yes. you're kind of supporting yes. even some Belarus channels who sometimes uh, as my uh, contact uh, about the Polish society Raymond Tonowski says uh, sometimes we even sponsor things that say stupid things you know mm-hmm. on, yes. the, on, on the on yes. the on the on the radio and the internet well but basically this is the price yes mm-hmm. because if you want to h- help the foreigners yes like Poland's uh, opposition was helped from the other sources as well yes during the communism Uh, I do not think that these donators, yes, these people who were just paying for Polish opposition were absolutely happy with each and every piece of uh, sentence which was said by each and every uh, opposition uh, political uh, uh, member of any kind of opposition mm-hmm. during, during these times. Well, this is something which we should take as, uh, as granted, you know, if you want to, to well, people sh- should learn, yes, what is stupid, what is not stupid. But I think that basically, uh, if, if, if we can imagine this moment of history that there is a, for probably the first time in the history independent de- democratic uh, state of Belarus independent both from east and west yes mm-hmm. and the Belarusian society is going to establish uh, whatever they want this political system well at least it is uh, just uh, obeying the, the, the rules of uh, core liberal democracy I do not think that we should uh, very very much interfere into this process but we would welcome uh, definitely this kind of process because well there is this kind of a theory that democracies are not uh, waging wars yes and so I do not think that we should be afraid of uh, democratic Belarus I think that we should be very much afraid of Belarus which is uh, a part of Russia Mm-hmm. Because definitely already we have this kind of problems under Lukashenko and imagine the situation that Lukashenko is superseded by even more pro-Russian uh, politician or just a kind of a, 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 a puppet, yes, just but it, ordinary but it, but it's puppet. A, it's a very big, quest, puppet. Uh, big question, this, this would those be people are, that are in jail right now in, in Belarus, let's say Tsep Kalo, you know, and others, yes. what way would they move, you know, they might appear very democratic, from, you know, the, 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 the camouflage. I'm just, you know, speculating. Yes. But uh, what, what, what would you say? Because, you know, when you find out, you know, when you easily can Google, you know, what kind of uh, organizations they were representing, what kind of money is behind those people, you know. And Lukashenko probably put them to jail because he wants to yes, to keep maybe. his position. Yes. Uh, for him, yes. both scenarios, yes. that you said, are bad because yes. he's losing yes. his power, you know. So yes. he's a, In any case, he's yeah. losing his power. Yeah. And he, the only the only idea which he stick to is just to have power, real power, not a kind of uh, imaginary power. Yes, a kind of, uh, of being uh, uh, just openly puppet of of, of of Russia there. But I think you know, uh, if we can just uh, explore this scenario that there is a democratic Belarusian state, mm-hmm. uh, definitely it's going to be dependent to some extent on the east uh, western kind of uh, economic support because they have to build a properly. Uh, working uh, economy, economy mm-hmm. mar- mar- free market economy, which they don't have. And look what kind of influence, h- huge economic influence on internal politics is coming from the European Union. European Union has the ability to force governments to behave, yes, and to act. Except Poland. Well, <laughs> no, not, not, not exactly. I think that Poland is also the mm-hmm. example of this uh, of the situation, considering, for example, the change of law in Poland in recent uh, times is uh, due to openly saying to, 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 to European uh, pressure. So I think that you can just sort out, yes, when it happens. But we do not know whether this is the, the, the right scenario. We can, as, uh, as I have said uh, previously, uh, as much easily can be just bordering with, uh, with, uh, with Russia. Russia. Yes, we will have just a border with Russia in this, in this place. And of course, it would be much darker and much uh, more complicated and uh, uh, a scenario which, which may inflict more damage and inflict more conflict. So I think that uh, 
the scenario when we are dealing with a democratic Belarusian state is in any case much better than the scenario when we are dealing with some kind of a Putin's or whoever is just going to be a ruler at Kremlin mm -hmm. uh, puppet. Okay, so because I see that we are running out of time, I want just quickly to touch your opinion. Yes. German-Polish relationship. Uh, what is the current situation? Because in our media, as I told you before the filming, it's, it's put very simple that, uh, you know, this uh, non-democratic uh, government of uh, Poland, uh, they are, you know, oppressing rule of law, they are oppressing uh, minorities. Uh, what is the actual situation? What is the interest of, of, of Germans uh, in uh, Germany? Because I have such, uh, such opinion that, uh, let's say, the arm industry of uh, Germany is very unhappy with what is happening in Poland because they would just like to export what they're building, but Poland is building their rifles, building the, you know, their, their tanks here there, and uh, there's uh, layers of this uh, problem. Yeah. Uh, how can you clarify this, you know, in, in, a, <coughs> in a few few minutes? Well, a complicated question. Well, this is a complicated uh, question, and from the Pol Pol Polish point of view, of course, we have uh, a period of, a, so to put it mildly, difficult uh, relations with Germany. Mm -hmm. But I think that this difficulty is, well, stems from two, two, two problems. First, of course, is the government in Warsaw, which is not, uh, well, very warmly accepted in Berlin, definitely, and wasn't, yes? I didn't mention so, the press issue as yes, well, which is yes. uh, and also... The, 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 and the press, which yeah. is usually critical towards all this government is saying. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of a problem of, 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 of a German power elite, which is just dealing with a government which is not very pleasant. For them. From, for, for them, for the, the, definitely. So this is one, one problem. They definitely wanted to have some influence over Polish politics, mm -hmm. uh, well, b b which is just obvious because, well, this is a big uh, country and it wants to have influence. But over, Poland has a different politics. opinion on what? But, but of course we want to be as much sovereign as it is possible and just to settle down all these problems, internal problems. Uh, uh, well, you, you know, I will tell you, uh, there was a chancellor of... Uh, uh, Germany, uh, his name was uh, Schroeder. Now he's a pro-Russian lobbyist, or even more, yes. Uh, and when, when, when we were uh, Polish government, uh, and I think that it was run by the car uh, current current opposition, the liberals, yeah. yes, the liberals under the task. Uh, yes, uh, when, yeah. and this government was objecting towards the Nord Stream. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, the, uh, uh, Schroeder told uh, to Poles and to the Polish government uh, that the energy politics and policies are solved only in Berlin. And I think that we can also, uh, just to reply to this, uh, to, to, to this statement, uh, some sort of problems are going to be uh, resolved only in Warsaw, mm -hmm. without asking uh, the permission. Berlin, uh, permission yes? And I think that this is, generally it is right. You know, because you need to have some level of sovereignty to be considered a player in international politics. Mm -hmm. If you do not have this sovereignty, you are just uh, uh, being treated as At a peace. kind of a, yes, yes, some kind of a non-important uh, subject of politics. And I do not think that Poland deserves to be a subject. Yes, we should be yeah, much absolutely. more orientated. Well, we are not, of course, as big country as Germany, but we are not uh, small in, in comparison. So basically, I think that we deserve some kind of respect as well. But definitely, the bigger, the much bigger problem from, from, from the point of view of Berlin is that they, the failure of their uh, foreign policy towards Russia and towards Eastern uh, European countries. Because they, uh, well, we can openly tell it, because even the Germans are telling it, yeah. they failed. So I'm not uh, rude. Well, Merkel is not saying that they, of they failed. Not. Yes, but when we are listening to the diplomats, when yeah. we are, for example, listening to people who are attending yesterday's conference, for example, it is quite clear... Yesterday is Friday. Oh, Friday, if, if sorry. If, Friday, if, Friday, if you are watching sorry, because it's... Friday, <laughs> Friday's, Friday's conference. 23rd. Uh, mm -hmm. 24, uh, 20, yes. Uh, um, 24th. 24th, 24th of, yeah. of, of March. Uh, uh, and we are listening to many, to many sources. Uh, they have the uh, awareness that they had no other kind of a plan B, yes, mm -hmm. any other option to what they're trying to forward towards Russia and Eastern European countries and Central European countries, including the Baltic states and Poland, of course. And now they are in kind of, a, they are trying to seek this kind of policy, but they have not re-established it. So they do not know exactly how to behave because something was completely in collapse, yes, now. 
uh, and uh, they should uh, build their relations uh, on different kind of uh, um, conditions uh, and they still are according to me maybe i'm wrong of course because i'm you know i don't know what is uh, happening in the governmental circles in berlin but my impression to put it in this way my impression is that they still <laughs> did not uh, Mm, or do not, uh, or, or will not uh, find uh, uh, the right uh, way out of this uh, problem. So I think that uh, this is something which is limiting German uh, politics and German power here. But you know, there is some complaint that this uh, demand by the Poles for this compensation is uh, over exaggerated. How do you see this? <coughs> well, I've, this is my impression. Okay, mm -hmm. I think that this was a kind of a tactical. Uh, move. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do not think that uh, a lot of people in Warsaw are really believing that we are going to get, get a lot money, of yeah. good money. Yes, mm -hmm. but I think that it was rather treated as a kind of a pressure point. Yes, uh, since they suspended is, the money. Yes, this is a, like a... this is something fragile, and we can just a bit push uh, towards this because it's uh, changing the. Uh, relations a bit mm -hmm. towards more balance, yes, because uh, these relations were uh, definitely this was my impression, but I think that it is a true kind of uh, uh, statement that uh, our relations with Germany were imbalanced, mm -hmm. and it was not good for both sides. By the way, when they are more balanced, I think that it is good. Well, it would be interesting to hear German yes. perspective about yes. this imbalance. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. Let's leave the rest of the topics because I, of course, would like to talk with you about uh, possible, you know, Ukraine. Uh, next uh, time, po I mean, Vilnius, I will no, visit no, 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 we, we, we're gonna we're gonna visit you <laughs> next time. Uh, so that's a very interesting topic, like this cooperation between Ukraine and, and, Pol and Poland, uh, and maybe some other smaller countries. How it would be, you know, possible after the war? I want to ask the last question. Yes. So, like, what will we do with the Kaliningrad? This how we came the whole circle around you know Germany. This is this might be a very uh, stressful situation with relationship uh, to, to Germany. You know, uh, you know there are some part of history that says that you know some of the, it's Lithuanian, of course the Poles, uh, of course the possibility of you know uh, independent uh, Kaliningrad, and of course the possibility that it's uh, not gonna break. You know, and there's still gonna be this uh, military plus down, which is probably unlikely in in a longer future. Well, you know, the, the question what we will do is. Uh, suggesting that we can do something and I do not think that we can do something now uh, mm. because mm -hmm. we have to wait for the results of, uh, of the war, uh, yeah. of the war. yes mm -hmm. definitely and what is going to be a consequence of this war for Russia because w w I think that so, w w because Kaliningrad is connected you know it's not disconnected yes well currently it is a part of Russia yes uh, it is inhabited by Russians it is uh, a place when a lot of uh, uh, military equipment and soldiers uh, were stationed actually because according to the uh, intelligence estimates uh, lots of is, them left lots of them left and mm -hmm. are not going to come back because they are dead so uh, definitely this is of course a good information from the point of view of Lithuania, mm -hmm. Poland and the, 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 the Estonia and Latvia as well, yes, because this is a kind of a, um, inflatable uh, aircraft carrier, yes, yeah. as, as very frequently Kaliningrad region is, is called. But I think that what is going to happen with this region is just the consequence of what is going to happen in Kremlin when the war ends. Because but, Okay, so I'm going to ask a very speculative, you know, follow-up. If... The Russia, you know, uh, fails uh, miserably. Well, of course, there's a, a very broad def definition of what this will be. But let's say there is no more Putin, who, who is obviously the, 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 the power uh, center. And uh, the Russians have to uh, negotiate, you know, with the West about, you know, this peace. Uh, what is the most likely scenario that can happen to the Kaliningrad? Well, it, it's going to be... Well, hold by, 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 by the Russian state, I guess, uh, because I do not think that there is any kind of entity which wants to recapture it. I don't think if you are going to, well, ask the Germans, yes, because it was the uh, <laughs> yeah, well, la last one. Yes, yeah. it's Prussia. Last so, so, so basically, this is not the question towards Poll and, and, and war, so it's the question towards Germany. We are not having any kind of. But you know, there are examples, uh, precedents basically. of like Kosovo, you know, and yes. similar, like uh, well, independent but, Kaliningrad. But, is that a possibility? Well, but the reality is, is that this is now a Russian entity. 
Hungary, and mm-hmm. I think that it belongs to Russia, and I think that it will be respected in any case. Yes, you know, I think that w- w- what is important to, 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 to know is that each war ends at some point. Even if it is 30th year old uh, of, uh, uh, war, I do not expect that this war is going to, 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 to take 30 years to, to resolve, because it's going to be much quicker. But definitely there will be some kind of an end to this war, which we are just now observing. <clears throat> and of course, so what is going to happen depends on the results of this war. If Russia wins, yes, let's consider this uh, uh, scenario for a while. Mm-hmm. I do not think it is much probable, hopefully. Because this is the worst scenario. But if in any case mm-hmm. there, there is an impression in Kremlin that they won, yes, whatever are the circumstances on the ground uh, mm-hmm. and on the battlefield, but if there is a psychological impression in Kremlin that they won, I think that we are just expecting another war. And mm-hmm. it's going to happen, unfortunately, much closer to the place when we are just actually uh, talking. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking also about the Polish territory. But fortunately, this is a highly... According to me, my impression is that this is the, 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 the lowest probability that this is going to be this kind of uh, outcome, of, outcome the war. of the war. The second is some kind of an armistice, yes, uh, so freezing this war. Mm-hmm. Like, well, this war was frozen already in 2016. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, this is if, if there is a kind of any armistice uh, between Ukrainians uh, and, 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 and Russians. Uh, it's just a matter of time when Putin or his successor is going to strike again mm-hmm. because this is only the matter of rearming Russia, rebuilding their resources, military resources, human resources, and they are just keep continuing aggression when they feel that they can start again mm-hmm. and again and again and again. The most interesting scenario is, of course, when uh, Russia fails. Yes, it's going to be this kind of a failure. And my, my guess is that it depends on um, what is going to happen in Kremlin. Yes, because Putin is definitely not a, a, a superman. Yes, and he's going to be dead sooner or later. Yes, either from natural uh, causes or for some kind of uh, uh, someone who is helping him, like Stalin. To 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 live uh, this uh, this uh, this life, but of course it depends what kind of scenario is uh, going to be sought on Kremlin f- as as a best one. And m- my worst nightmare uh, is paradoxically the kind of a scenario that a new opposition leader, Russian opposition leader, emerges, a new mm. one or an old one, we will see. And the West is forgetting what is was happening, mm-hmm. and is embracing this new opposition leader by, like they embrace Yeltsin. Mm-hmm. Yes, because this is going. This scenario might be repeated. Yes, we have to, everything will be put on Putin, who will be dead at that moment. Yes, it will be called Putinism. Yes, that Putinist uh, uh, involved uh, us in the war. Yes, mm-hmm. and so on, so on. And with, this is not true, actually, because Putin is not killing anybody on the battlefield. Russians and Russian citizens are actually committing all these atrocities, which are uh, being happened in, uh, in, 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 in Ukraine uh, territory. Yes, uh, So these are definitely not Putinist. Uh, so we, we have to remember. But the West wants to just embrace this new leader as a kind of a sign of a new future for Russia, for building democracy, liberal democracy, which will never, I guess, my, this is my impression, uh, will never happen in, 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 in that country is not built in, for in democracy. Russia, no, definitely, and we will have this kind of another kind of a Yeltsin-like uh, period, and this Yeltsin-like period will be probably uh, ended with another uh, leader like Putin when it's uh, going to rearm itself and and, and to rebuild uh, resources. So I think that this is something which is very dangerous uh, when simply we are saying, well, this is the past. Yes, now we have new Russia and this new Russia is going to be a democratic, uh, a liberal state uh, um, and uh, the West should also help uh, Russia with some, uh, well, at least uh, loosening sanctions, not if not giving money, but losing sanctions. And I think that it's going to be a very dangerous moment in history when uh, people start to forget uh, what Russia was capable of doing uh, in Ukraine. For a year and, uh, and and so, so I do not think what is going to happen, but I think that we should uh, 
at least take this in have in mind yeah. different and take into consideration different scenarios just to be prepared what to do when things in uh, Moscow and in Kremlin are going to, to, to change. Because sooner or later there will be a change, but we do not know in which direction and uh, um, who is going to be the face of this change. Okay, Richard. So let's finish on this pessimistic note uh, <laughs> uh, with some light well, the, optimism. The, 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 the future is open anyway, you know. So, so, but, 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 but it's not pessimist. I think that we should just really had a re realist view on, on on the society of Russia and on the state of Russia. Okay, I totally. If agree. we abandon this realist view, we are going to be in trouble. Blinded yes. by, by by Russian light. Yes. Okay, so thank you, Richard, for, for taking your time on, on weekend, you know, uh, to, to have a chat with us. It's my pleasure. <laughs> You're very polite. <laughs> okay, and uh, thanks everyone who were watching. I guess I didn't say this before the episode, but uh, probably this channel that we have, uh, the second channel, Let's Talk Europe, it slowly will be transitioned into uh, Let's Talk Rzeczpospolita kind of format, uh, and we're going to have uh, chats with the... Uh, uh, you know, Poles and Ukrainians and um, and hopefully the Belarus uh, people about the region and uh, it, the English language might suit it to this uh, this purpose because uh, there's so many different languages in this, this region and uh, we obviously don't speak all of them. So um, see you in the next Let's Talk Europe uh, or Let's Talk Rzeczpospolita episode and uh, thanks again.